Hello. Like the flap of a butterfly in the Amazon that can escalate into a tornado in America, the COVID-19 pandemic shows that a tightly knit complex system can transform local events into a wider spread crisis. Many fear the global pandemic that escalated from a local outbreak in China could result in a major economic depression. Responsible leadership from the private sector is needed more than ever. How you respond as a responsible business leader will have an important influence on the state of our post-COVID world. Consumers and employees are increasingly looking to business leaders to address the vulnerabilities in our interconnected society. According to the 2020 Edelman Trust Barometer, employers are the most trusted institution over government and media during the crisis. So a majority expect business to adapt operations to protect employees and the local community. This marks an opportunity for you and business leaders to take the lead and embrace a broader sense of purpose. But will you heed the call? My colleague Natalia Olinek and I propose six ways you as a responsible business leader can contribute to a more balanced post-COVID world. Our first recommendation is to orchestrate local for local supply chains. One key vulnerability is the uneven arbitrage between business efficiencies and countries' resilience. While manufacturers have orchestrated global supply chains to create saving and boost efficiencies by concentrating their operations with a handful of suppliers in a few countries, this has come at the expense of local supply security. Post-COVID markets will benefit from rebalancing through reshoring, where resilience trumps efficiency through a local for local or regional for regional model. But this is not all doom and gloom for businesses. In this next phase of globalization, digitalization will help you harness the opportunities of economies of knowledge and that will help you compensate some of the lost economies of scale. Second recommendation is to demonstrate societal purpose with agility. LVMH, the luxury conglomerates with brands such as Louis Vuitton and Christian Dior, has adapted fast some of its cosmetic manufacturing facilities to produce hand sanitizer for resource-constrained French hospitals. Amazon also announced it would temporarily stop the deliveries of non-health essential items to focus on priority shipments. These moves testify to the ability of companies to improvise fast because they are in tune with the society around them. Third recommendation, protect your people. Next to a sanitary crisis, COVID could become an economic crisis. So, Businesses can show leadership by softening the blow for its most vulnerable employees and suppliers. For example, Google established a COVID-19 fund that enables all temporary staff and vendors globally to take paid sick leave if they have potential symptoms of COVID-19 or can come into work because they're quarantined. Fourth, like the medics at the moment say, test, 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 we recommend collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Systemic challenges need systemic and collaborative solutions. Unfortunately, as countries seem to engage in a zero-sum game, businesses should step in and call their governments to collective action and collaborative leadership through public-private partnerships. Again, according to Edelman, citizens expect businesses and states to collaborate to stem the crisis and its worst effects. The fifth recommendation we have is to show forbearance. Multinationals have taken advantage of globalization to maximize profits. They've shaped the deregulation agenda that has underpinned this globalization. So, first example, they exploit perfectly legal cross-border tax loopholes, the question becomes, is it responsible? 
Well, the magnitude of states' financial distress after the virus might probably show that it's not. Second example is that the crisis also reveals that the acceleration of deregulation have compromised citizen safety. The case of how far to exploit deregulation is particularly acute in the pharma and healthcare industries. About 80% of the basic components used in American drugs come from China and India. So this again is perfectly legal, but as global supply chains break, is it responsible? Probably not. Finally, we propose to promote a green recovery. Instead of reverting back to business as usual, remember that the continuous interference with wild ecosystems, climate change and pollution will cause many more crises and many more frequent crises. So a crisis is an opportunity to rethink things rather than patch previous ways. In the aftermath of the pandemic, growth might be relaunched by a disease's reinvention of economies around green technology, renewable energy, and natural infrastructure. So what's the bottom line of all this? While the movement towards a multi-stakeholder approach to businesses has increased in recent years, the COVID pandemic creates an opportunity for a conscious mindset change. Responsible business leaders will recognize this moment as an opportunity to demonstrate a societal lens that contributes to stability and makes everyone better off in the long term. So the real question is, will you be one of them? Thank you very much for your attention.